In this video, I want to introduce how we can use Bayes' formula to do statistical inference. So I've written out Bayes' formula here, which we've seen before, which is on the left-hand side, we just have what we call the posterior density. So this is the probability of our certain values of our parameters, given our data and given our model choice. And we know from Bayes' rule that this is actually equal to something which we've called the likelihood, which is what we're going to talk about today, times the, on the numerator, something which we call the prior, which represent our prior beliefs after we've sort of conditioned on our particular model choice as to the values of theta. And we're dividing that through by something which we're just going to call the probability of the data, which I'm just going to use the term the denominator. And I'm going to introduce how we use Bayes' formula to do statistical inference by means of an example. And the example which I'm going to give here may seem a little bit contrived, but I hope that you can see that it would be very easy to extend this particular example to encompass some relatively real world examples. So the example which I'm going to give here is imagine that we are trekking through the Amazon rainforest and we encounter three individuals who have come from a particular tribe. So we've got individual one, individual two, and individual three. And prior experience tells us that they either come from a tribe which has a particular disease, so the population from which they come either has the disease, in which case we say theta is equal to one, so theta here represents whether their population of these individuals actually is um, has the disease present, or they come from a tribe which is completely free from this disease, in which case theta is equal to zero. Furthermore, we note that for these individuals that their infected status is all asymptomatic. In other words, none of these individuals actually have the disease. So I'm going to use the letter X to denote the infected status of each of these individuals. So for individual one, they're not infected. Individual two, they're also not infected. And individual three, they're also not infected. And if we were to sort of represent the probability of each of these individuals being infected, we could use the letter F to denote the probability that an individual in a tribe is infected. We could denote each of these individuals as having a probability of 1 minus F of being infected. Furthermore, the example which I'm going to use is that experience or prior experience tells us that F depends on theta, quite obviously, right? If they come from a tribe which doesn't have the disease at all, then the probability of that individual being infected is zero. So that's the case if theta is equal to zero. And prior experience tells us that if they come from a tribe which does have this disease present, then the probability is a half. Okay, so let's use all of this information to help us to derive the likelihood here. But first of all, in the likelihood, we've got these sort of two terms which you need to define. We've got the data and we've got the model. What's the data in this example? Well, the data in this example is just that which I've written down here, which we could define a little bit more sort of concretely by saying that the data is, in this case, x1 is equal to 0, x2 is equal to 0, and x3 is equal to 0. In other words, the infected status of these three individuals are all uninfected. Secondly, let's define exactly what we mean by a model. So the model in this case represents a few things. One of them is the way in which they were sampled from the population. So what are we going to assume about this particular aspect? Well, firstly, I'm going to assume that the infected status of one individual does not confer any additional information about the infected status of another individual over and above the fact that they come from a population. So what does that mean practically? Well, perhaps it means that they're not exactly from the same family, because if they're all from the same family, perhaps there would be a heightened probability of if one of the individuals is infected, the other one's also being infected. So we're going to assume that they're independent, and we're also going to assume that they're identically distributed. And that's just the same thing as saying that they come from the same tribe. So when we put these two things together in statistical language, we say that the individuals are what we call randomly sampled. So it is some sort of random sample from the population. That's the first part of the model. The second part of the model is that which we've actually given here in F. And it's the way in which the infected status of the tribe actually influences the probability of an individual being infected. So the second part of the model is f of theta. OK, now given the data and the model, we should be able to put these two things together and formulate the likelihood. So what we can do now is we can write that the probability of our data, well, our data is just that x1 is equal to 0, x2 
is equal to zero and x3 is equal to zero, given in this case a particular value of theta, which I'm not going to specify, and also given the model choice. Well, if we assume that they are randomly sampled, our first assumption from the model, then what we can assume is that to work out the overall probability, we just multiply together the individual probabilities. And we already have the individual probabilities, in which case, in each case rather, it's just 1 minus f. And f we know also from above here. So what we can do is we can write the overall probability as 1 minus f of theta times 1 minus f of theta times 1 minus f of theta because of the probability of the first individual not being infected and the second individual not being infected and the third individual not being infected. So this is 1 minus f of theta to the power of 3. And we could actually simplify this for the two cases, so we can think about the likelihood in the case if we were to sort of replace theta here by theta being equal to zero with the same other conditioning, so the same probability. So we've got our data here, and we're conditioning now on theta being equal to zero and our model choice. In this case, f is just zero, so it's just one. It's one times one times one, which in the end comes out as one. And if we were to think about the example where, in this case, instead of theta being zero, theta was one, in this case it would just be one minus a half, which is just a half, times a half times a half, which is one minus, well, one minus a half to the power of three, which is a half to the power of three, which is just one eighth. So now what we've used is we've used our likelihood function here to help us derive what is the probability of the data under the two particular circumstances, the circumstance where the individuals come from an uninfected tribe and the situation where they come from an infected tribe. In the next video we're going to talk about what is meant by a prior and how we might in this case formulate it and also how we can then use the likelihood and the prior to actually arrive at the denominator.